Hey guys, welcome back. I'm actually out on a job today. Um, this is a rental property for one of my buddies that I get a lot of work from. And uh, I'm gonna be hanging some cabinets today. I gotta put some flooring in the kitchen and the bathroom. Um, I'll be here today and tomorrow. Um, it's around seven o'clock in the morning. I already found my first screw up. So uh, first wall that I'm going to be putting cabinets on is gonna be this one right here. There is a washer, dryer, and a refrigerator going on that wall. And on the prints here, it says the flip-flop. Originally, the refrigerator was going to go over here, but now it's going to go on that side. So first screw-up they did was, this is a 36-inch wide by 12 inches high cabinet. They sent me a 30 by 12, so that's not wide enough. And then there's supposed to be a 3-inch Okay, sorry about that. I got a call about these. So I guess we're going to use the 30 inch cabinet, 30 inch long, and we're going to get a three inch filler and stick it between this upper and this one because these are already paid for and he doesn't want to have to try to return them and, um, you know, get a different one. We don't even know if they'll even have that in stock. So um, we're going to end up using the 30. We'll put a three inch filler between it. The refrigerator that's going in the opening is 32 inches wide. So that'll work out perfect because it's 33 and the edge of the refrigerator is gonna be showing anyways. We're not putting a board on the end of it. So it's not a big deal, even if it hung over a hair. Uh, once again, this is just a rental property, so we don't need to get too crazy with it. So basically the first cabin I need to hang right here is a 2730, which is gonna end up going in the corner there. But I don't have a filler because I gotta put a filler between the cabinet and the corner of the wall here. Cause if I don't put a filler piece and I butt that cabinet tight against the wall, the door's not gonna open. The door is gonna bind on the wall itself. So I don't have the filler. He's gonna go grab those for me. So I'm just gonna leave this cabinet about an inch away from the wall and then I'll cut a filler and slide it in afterwards because um, then I can keep going. Now, unfortunately, everything in this house is extremely unlevel. If you can sort of see in the camera here, look at that big uh, raised area in the ceiling there. You can see how uh, it's really crooked. I have my laser set up here. I'm actually gonna show you on my laser how far off everything is. So I'm gonna do a... Uh, two lines here one that's going up and down and one that's going right to left now this laser um, adjusts itself it automatically levels itself as long as you're close to level when you turn it on it takes care of the rest for you so basically if I measure from the ceiling down on this side over here to the laser line we're at 52 and a quarter if I come over here and measure down we're at I'm in the way we're at 53 and a half. So we're an inch and a quarter off from the ceiling itself. Now the floor is probably gonna be just as bad. I imagine so. The floor over here is 41 and a half. And we have 39 and three quarters. So it's extremely crooked, this house. Um, it's a really, really old house. So what I'm going to do is the chair rail is actually pretty level. So whoever put the chair rail up did a pretty good job. Nine and three eighths, nine and a quarter. So the chair rail is only an eighth off, but we're not using the chair rail. We got to go above the chair rail. Um, I don't know why the chair rail is there. My guess is they probably replaced the drywall halfway down, didn't want to tape it. And so they just stuck a piece of trim over top of it. But um, on the prints here, the total height of the cabinets are 54 plus 18 plus 12. So that's 54 plus 30 is 84 inches to the top of the cabinet. So I got to measure up 84 inches and then I got to come down 30. 30 will be my baseline where the cabinets are going to sit. So let me just get a ballpark idea here. So if I go up to 84, which is right about here, Tape measure stuck. And redo that. So if I come up to 84, I don't want to mark on the wall. Come down 30. Looks like we are four inches off the chair rail. So we got to go up four inches above the chair rail. Um, so I think what I'll do is 
get a real good measurement and uh, put a couple little tiny marks because there's nothing going on in those walls. There's no tile or anything because the washer and dryer and refrigerator are going to be covering most of it. Um, so I'm going to take some good measurements and I'm going to measure probably honestly probably just going to use that chair rail as my measuring point. It's only an eighth inch off and I can fudge it a little bit, not too, too concerned about it. The problem is, is this corner right here, this exterior wall is crooked. You could, I don't know if you can see in the picture or in the camera or not, but you, where the two crosshairs come together on the laser and from the top, you can see how much wider it is. So basically it's seven and three quarters, eight. So it's a, this outside wall is a quarter inch out at the top. So um, he doesn't want to buy a ton of fillers. The filler pieces come three inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this first cabinet over here one inch away from the wall at the bottom. So when I go to cut that filler piece to go between the cabinet and the wall, I'm going to have to go from a one inch to an inch and a quarter at the top. So, but I'll put that in afterwards. That's not a big deal. I'll just cut that on the table saw and we'll slide it in afterwards. Um, so basically I need to go one inch over from the corner. That's the, gonna be the beginning of the first cabinet. And then I need to get myself a four inch line above that chair rail. It might be a little bit more. I gotta get a better accurate measurement. So let me get all these measurements done and then we'll get these two upper 30s installed. Um, I'll have to wait on the other one until the three inch filler comes because there's no point in installing that 12 inch tall cabinet without the three inch filler because I'll attach the filler to the cabinet before I put it up into place. And uh, I'm gonna end up taking the doors off of these to put these cabinets up. A, it's gonna make it lighter. And B, um, I like to clamp one cabinet to the next cabinet with these clamps here so that I can screw the two faces together, which I'll show you all that. So let me get this all set up and then I'll come back. Okay, one other thing here. The wall this way is within a 16th of an inch. So we're just gonna go ahead and put them tight against this wall. We're not gonna shim the top out a 16th of an inch because if I shim the top out a 16th of an inch, this end cabinet over here that's gonna show from coming in the kitchen is gonna have a gap at the top and then I'm gonna have to put a molding down the side. A 16th of an inch is really not gonna do anything. It's not gonna hurt the cabinet at all and I'm not gonna worry about that. So that's good, which is nice because I was afraid that wall would be shift it one way or another, and then I'd have a big gap at the top or bottom, but that's not the case there. Um, I made a couple marks here, little tiny marks. This is one inch off this corner, and this ended up being three and a half, I think it is, off this molding. Um, so now what I need to do is I'm gonna, actually, in this area where the cabinet's gonna cover the wall, I'm gonna make a couple holes with the screw until I find my first stud because I got to screw these into the wall studs. Now, when I find my first stud, if the house is built right, which who knows, um, should be able to measure from the center of that stud 16 inches over to the center of the next stud. But I don't know if that's going to work or not. So I'm going to do some test holes behind where the cabinets are getting mounted. You'll never see them. That's the easiest way to take care of that. Um, so let me get that done and then I'll come back. Okay, I have my first two studs marked. As you can see on the wall, I had to put a bunch of holes to find the studs because they're nowhere near where they were supposed to be. And then what I did was below where the cabinet's going, I stuck a piece of tape and I made a little mark with a uh, Sharpie on it so I know where the center of the stud is. Now, um, when you have already painted walls and you don't want to mess them up, that's the easiest way to do it because then you can just peel that piece of tape off and hopefully it doesn't take the paint with it. Um, these shelves, they have screws going into the bottom of the brackets, so I don't want to take them apart if I don't have to, so I'm just going to leave them in there. These cabinets aren't too heavy. Setting this first cabinet is the hardest to do, especially when you're doing it by yourself, um, to try to get it level and in place and screwed in, you know. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this first one up. I'll show you guys how I do it. Once this one's up and in place and level, the one next to it butts right to it. It gets really easy after you get your first cabinet set. It's just getting the first one set that's the hardest. 
So the screws that I like to use, these are cabinet screws. They have a flat head, it's almost like a washer, and these are Torx bit in the middle. They're not Phillips. Phillips bits don't like to always go in. The, the, the bit likes to spit out of the uh, screw. So these work better. The Phillips definitely uh, tend to strip out. So what I'm going to do is when I lift this cabinet up, I'm going to put a screw through this flange on the bottom side, and then I'll come around to the top if I have room between the ceiling and the cabinet, and I'll put them up here. If I don't, I'll have to put them inside the cabinet. Now, um, these are half-inch plywood back cabinets. They're not particle board. They're not cheap, thin stuff. Um, these cabinets come from Cleveland, Ohio, and they're actually pretty well built. They're all plywood sides and back and shelves rather than particle board. So it works out pretty nice. I'm going to stick these screws in my mouth so I can kind of hold this in place and we'll get a screw in, into it. I'm in the way of the camera, I know that. Right there is level. Now, I don't know if this is going to want to stay or not. might end up having to take it back down. Sometimes I can get it to just stay like that. That chair rail is my friend today. Let me go find a ladder. I don't know if there's one here or not. All right, I have a bucket. I forgot my ladder today. did for up top was I measured over from the corner over to there and I knew it was 20 and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this one screwed in. Let's double check our leveling here. Make sure we're level before I put any more screws in it. We're good that way. And we're good that way. Eh, I might drop it a hair maybe a 30 seconds off. So let me get this finished screwed in and then we'll put the one up next to it. Okay, first cabinet is all in. I have the next two studs marked. We're gonna put this one up next to it. And this one should go a little bit easier than the last one. So I just took it off.
see how this is uh, out like that. You need to push it back, get it tight. Try to make them both flush with each other. Okay. Now we can measure for those upper screws. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from in here over eight inches. I wish I would have remembered my four foot ladder. some other tools okay now we're going to screw the two faces together on the inside with these type of screws right here these are two and a quarter inches long they're going to come through the side face here and then go into the cabinet into this face a little bit more than halfway so we're going to pre-drill these now um, some cabinets you can stick the screw behind the hinges this style hinge you can't um, you possibly could get one there so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm just gonna put one down here and one up here. And they're just gonna go through the side. We're gonna use a 7 30 seconds drill bit first. And then I'm just gonna use a 3 8 drill bit just to go in a tiny bit to just countersink the head just a little bit. Grab my drill. This is a Torx bit as well, just a different size. because when you start running these at a high speed, this is like a maple face. Um, it starts burning up the bit. Sometimes you'll have to readjust a little bit. Now I think I'm going to have to put three on this cabinet because this right here is bowing out a little bit.
top come in. And then these two cabinets are installed. I have to wait until later to put that third. Sorry about that, I got uh, So after I get this finished, we'll put these doors on and then I gotta wait for that three inch filler for that one. Still not happy with these two up here. They're a little bit off. And they move in, just gotta get them in the right spot. Yeah, that's better. And that probably, partially the wall probably has a little bit of a bow in it. Uh, grab the doors. Put, we'll put three of the four doors on. We'll leave that other one off where the uh, other cabin has to go. So I have these sitting in order here. We can adjust these in a minute here. Yep, they're actually pretty darn good. I put them exactly where they were, so those two look good. See how this next one lines up? Okay, this one's a hair lower than that one, so we're gonna raise this one up a hair. Now there are a lot of adjustments on these hinges. If you look here, there's a slot in there. If you loosen this screw up and the one up the top, you'll be able to move your door up and down. Then you have two screws here. One of these will, will tilt the bottom of the door that way, and then it'll come this way. And then the other one will move the door out away from the frame or tight to the frame. So there's four adjustments per hinge, but this one looks pretty good other than it just needs raised up a tiny bit. So 
I'm just gonna loosen these two. And I could feel the other cabinet door with my finger. And we look pretty good there. All right, so that's the end of these two for now. Um, let's see how our filler works out here that I gotta cut once it comes. Let's see what we have for a size here. Inch and an eighth at the bottom, inch and three eighths at the top. So it's about a quarter inch crooked. So, all right, I'm gonna get set up for the next set of cabinets. Okay, I have my first base cabinet over here leveled both directions. You can see how far I had to keep it away from the wall right here to get it to level out. But I have it going level both ways. So now I got to fit the one next to it, which is the base cabinet for the sink. So I need to drill holes in the base. This one already has shutoffs. So we're going to have to make a U-cut in the back there. And I'll drill a hole right here for the uh, drain pipe to go down. Holes drilled for the drain and for the water lines. And try to pick this up and slide it over. I'm gonna get this one leveled up and screwed in. Sink cabinet's installed. I like to put some screws into the floor on the side of the cabinet that gets covered up by the next cabinet. It's all shimmed out and everything. And the spacers between the two and screwed. Okay, these base cabinets are all installed. All the shims and everything are cut flush so the countertop can sit on here. I put one screw down here through the toe kick into the floor and that'll get covered up with the with the panel that covers all the toe kick on so these ones are in they're all nice and secure the holes are cut for the pipes so now we gotta set three upper cabinets on this wall and two lower cabinets and this is the um, <clears throat> wall for the stove and then after that everything's set um, I guess they never even gave us the cabinet that goes over the refrigerator and we're not gonna put it in we're just gonna leave it out Nobody really uses those cabinets above the refrigerator that much anyways. So now, let's, I made some marks on this wall for this cabinet, but I need to find the, the stud. So I'm going to go find the stud, then I'll come back and we'll hang this one up. Okay, I'm going to have to bump this cabinet this way a little farther than normal. I just had to make a little bit wider ripper because uh, I don't have a stud until right here. And I want to at least get two screws into this. I'm going to grab something to stand on again. I'm going to grab another paint bucket.
want to get the screw started. Now I'll just put a couple screws in the other side to just kind of hold it. But once the next cabinet goes in, that should hit two studs. And then I can screw this one into that one and it'll hold it all into place. These are really not going into much drywall and whatever's behind it. on the top okay let's get this next one up here <clears throat> I have a stud mark here and I know that there's other one right here the corner one will have to put it on a real good angle to get into the other one there's a microwave going right here which that might interfere with I'm not sure yet Before I screw the top in, I'm going to put a screw through this to hold it. So I got to drill this again. I'm going to put two screws up there. Find my little drill bit. Hopefully, I didn't lose it.
okay, that one's in. I just gotta put a screw up top and then see if the next where the next stud is. So let me uh, get the next cabinet ready. Okay, let's put in this last upper cabinet. These again, I'm gonna put two screws here and then we'll come back and put these upper doors on. I gotta put two screws at the top of the cabinet as well. Okay, let's start putting on these doors. Binding up a little bit, so I need to move out this door on the bottom here. Oops. Okay, what are we doing here? A little crooked. Some reason it's binding up a little bit. I don't know why. Don't know why. Might have a bad hinge on that one. Have to worry about that one after. These things come. These cabinets come wrapped in cardboard boxes, so you never know what's happened to them. This one's 
doing the same thing. It's got to be something's wrong with these hinges. That's better on that one. mess with those after and then this door originally was opening this way but they pre-drilled these cabinets so that you can put the door on the opposite side and the doors can get flipped either way it does not matter Okay, I'm going to mess with these two center ones off camera and see what I can do about fixing those ones. All right, guys, the kitchen is done. I had to have some help with the microwave, um, just trying to get it held up there and wire it in. So um, I didn't re get a chance to record that. But uh, all the cabinets are in. Like I said, we're not putting uh, one next to these now. We're just going to leave that with the refrigerator there. The only thing left I need to do to the cabinets is build the filler pieces for there filler piece down here between the wall and the cabinet we got one over here and one up there so now what i'm doing is i'm working on putting this vent fan in the bathroom here we had to cut a hole in the wall and then i went outside and drilled through the house right there so we could run our vent pipe out and then i'm going to have to run electrical wire from here over to here which is not ideal might end up having to put an electrical box in there um, a lot of times these vanity lights, they, a lot of people don't put an electrical box in there and they just, uh, you know, run the wires right behind it. And I don't really like doing that. So I'm probably going to go ahead and put an electrical box behind the, uh, light as long as I can fit one and it doesn't stick out past the light. So I think that's going to end this video because all this other stuff right now I'm working on is kind of, uh, really not anything to film. It's kind of just a lot of messing around and getting stuff to fit and stuff like that. So I'm going to end this video here. Figured I'd show you guys uh, installing some cabinets. Um, I don't know how, uh, if it was really uh, exciting or not, but um, we got that done. The microwave's wired in. I'm going to wire in these outlets tomorrow. Um, this we're going to cap and put a cover on it, I think. This is an old Romex. Um, it is live, so I think we're going to cap it and uh, just put a blank cover over it because you can't bury that stuff in the wall. You have got you have to have access to it in case you ever have a problem with it. These two wires need to get tied together, which they'll get tied together on the back of the plug. Um, once these two are tied together, this is gonna give us power up to the microwave. So uh, an electrician ran everything. So they did all the, you know, the main wiring to the fuse panel and all that. I'm just hooking up outlets, just putting in the plugs. Um, and then uh, tomorrow, I need to build up this bathroom floor. I have two layers of plywood to put in. One layer is going to come to the height of this 2x6, which I still have to screw down. And then we're going to put another layer on, which is going to come to this OSB right here. And then we're going to put, I got to grind a couple seams down with my grinder. And then we're going to put in this uh, uh, vinyl flooring. It's going to run this direction like this. It's going to come through here, right into the bathroom. Um, then I got to hang some base and stuff like that. So I'm trying to knock out some of this tedious stuff now so that tomorrow I can just knock out the floor, the trim, the electrical, and I'll be done here. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow.